let's take things up a notch with Jet Appointments. Now, this is an add-on or another plugin for the whole Grokoblock suite, and it works really well with Jet Engine. Now, there is Jet Booking as well, which we are going to cover in a later video. Difference between appointments and bookings is quite simple, really. If you were going to go to a dentist and you are now going to book an appointment to see them, that is an appointment. You could also pay for that appointment. You might be booking by a certain day and a certain hour slot. Whereas the booking form or the booking plugins, that is more like where you're booking for maybe an entire day or a number of days. So it might be that you're booking a car for a week or a hotel or some accommodation or a rental site for two or three days. Or maybe you're going to book someone to, like a musical act for a wedding or something for the whole day. That's where the booking works really well. Whereas if you're booking for like half an hour or an hour here or there, you know, just like I said, maybe it's for a barber's, maybe it's for a nail technician, maybe it's for one-to-one -one consultancy for web design services. That's where the jet appointments kicks in. So, so have a good idea for what you want to work on. If you're going to be like making bookings or accepting bookings for day and hour or time slot jet appointments, if it's going to be like bulk days, so they can do one day, five days, 20 days, jet bookings. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to go install Jet Appointments onto our WordPress website, but we also need to install another plugin as well, WooCommerce, because I'm going to show you how you can integrate with that and also accept payments. Now, I'm not covering off WooCommerce settings. I've got loads of videos on that already, and I'm not even going to add in a payment gateway, but I'm going to install it just to show you that if you were accepting payments, the facility is there. So let's go to Plugins, Add New. We will then go to upload plugin and I'm now going to install my Jet appointments. And once you've done that, you might as well add in WooCommerce. Now, if you're not going to be accepting payments, you can leave the WooCommerce out. So you can see the plugins that we now have activated on our website. What we're going to do is go over to appointments and we're going to go to setup. I recommend you go there before you go to settings because the setup actually takes you through a bit of a wizard. And I strongly recommend you do that. Step one asks you to connect your post type. So we're going to scroll down until we get to sessions. That's pretty obvious here. Now it does say to you, do you want to add providers? So if you imagine you now have like a drop down or a checkbox where you can select your parent post type, which is sessions, do you want them to also select another post type? Now, I did not create a separate post type for the trainers because my classes at the moment are one class and it's one trainer. It's not like you have one class and you can pick whichever trainer you want. If, however, you did have a separate post type for trainers and it's like everything we've done previously with Jet Engine, you would go and pick it. So you would say add provider and then you would pick it from here. So let's just pretend we had trainers and they fell into coupons. Let's pretend that was the post type name. You would go and pick coupons. Now, in this example, we don't need to worry about that. Why would you, you be using the facility for adding providers? Well, maybe you want them to pick the class, like I've said, then you want them to pick the trainer. And then underneath that, you will then have the schedule for that particular trainer for that particular class. That's totally fine if you want to do that, because what I'm going to do here is basically the same kind of process. But I'm keeping it simple, whereby you're just going to go and pick your class type. Now let's hit next. These are the fields that will be available to you within the form. Now, some of these are going to be a little bit weird and odd, and you're not going to be sure what they are. Like the provider, well, we're not really using provider. We will have a service, which will be the post type. We have the name, we have email, we have date, we have the appointment date, we have the slot. Now, I want you to think beyond what you see here. You know, when you're like applying for an appointment, it's not uncommon for there to be like a notes section or a comments, like maybe provide further information. We're also going to add in a cost field so that later on, when we do have to link this over to WooCommerce, we've actually got a cost field as well. And we'll also ask for a phone number because that is not there at the moment. So the first field I'm going to add is notes. I'm going to add in another field and I'm going to call this phone. And then I'm going to add in another field and I'm going to call this cost. And that's literally it. Right now I'm going to hit next. Now all of my classes are actually staged at different times of the day and different days of the week. But as a rule of thumb, 
from the get go, what is the minimum and the maximum days and time slots you want you would want to make available? There will be certain slots. I mean, if you want to allow the person who does the booking to pick whatever time they want, you would go for time picker. If you're going to allow, if the appointment is going to be like a recurring one, so once you book 1 p.m. say on a Monday, there may be a sequence of appointments that keep running 1 p.m. Monday. I'm going to say that we're only going to go for a slot. So if you want to go to this particular weight training session, you would go and pick that day and that time. The duration of these, I'm going to set all of them to be one hour. Will there be any buffer time before and afterwards? I think so. I think you should have that. We'll go with 15 minutes before and we'll go 15 after as well. So warm up time, relax time, go and have a shower time. Can you still make an appointment like literally like on the time? So if there's an appointment from one to two, can someone book at one o'clock? I'm going to say no. So I'm going to say you must be booked within 15 minutes prior. Now at the moment, the default is eight to five for Monday to Friday, but we have nothing for Saturday or Sunday. I'm going to go and add in a slot for Saturday. What about Sunday? We might as well do that as well. Now, if you want to get rid of any time slots, you can do. Just hit the bin and it will completely disappear. But what if you want to have separate time slots? So let's say we've got eight till five, but I also want to do 7 p.m. until say 9 p.m. You go and hit the add sign. Let's pick 7 p.m. and it ends at 9 p.m. like that. So now we have different slots available for you because maybe there's like a lunch break or maybe there's no one available. So you can refine this. And remember, this is like the global slots in a way or the global appointment list with days and hours and all of that. When we get to the individual sessions, you will refine it specifically for that. Another cool feature about Jet Appointment is how you can actually specify particular days off. So I'm going to go over here to add day and I'm going to say Christmas week. And we are going to say that for this particular year, 2023, no one is actually working on, say, the 23rd of December until 26. You can go and add in extra days. Step four is probably one of the most important steps. Are we going to have WooCommerce integration? I'm going to enable that. The second really important thing is, are you going to have a single service booking form or a sample page? Now, what's the difference? A sample page basically means that you can pop that form anywhere you want on your website. It's almost like it's also known as a static form, right? So let's say I'm going to say make an, you know, book an appointment. I could put it on my home page, my contact page. I could put it wherever I want. And the idea is, is that you would go there and then you would select your class or your session. So you want to do weight training. You would then pick weight training and then it would now show you the available slots or times that you can pick. That's great when you want what I call like a generic form that you can put anywhere. The single service one is more for your single post template. So we've created that for all of our sessions. Well, you created one single post template and when you click on a session, it brings out the details. If you create a form that sits there, when you go to that form and it's already cardio, when you make an appointment, it will also be for cardio. So there's no need for you to go and select cardio because I would say it defeats the purpose of putting it on the single post template. Look, if I've gone to the cardio page or whatever, I shouldn't have to pick cardio again. It should know that I'm on the cardio, right? Reduce the number of clicks. But if you want to give me the authority to pick my session, then use the sample page. Now, I'm going to just enable both of them, but we will actually be working on the single one because I want to show you, well, where do they go? because they won't be sat within Jet Appointment. They will actually go over to Jet Engine Forms down here. And again, I'm going to touch on a feature that we did enable in an earlier video, but I want to remind you about that. The other third key thing is where is the form going to sit? And we are going to go for Jet Engine Forms. Now, if you do go and get the extra plugin, which is Jet Form Builder, you may want to use that. But what's really cool about Crocker Block is that you can, if you want, just use the Jet Engine form. So that is what we're going to do. And I'm now going to hit finish. Now, if you go back over to Jet Engine in your WordPress dashboard, you will notice over here for the default modules, I had enabled Forms Legacy. The reason I did that was so that we would now have the Forms feature down here. Because if I now go over to Forms, you'll see Single Service Booking Page and Static. That was like the sample one that you could use on any page. This is where they sit. 
and this is where you will modify and work on them. Now, it's not like a drag and drop facility because a lot of the features with styling that you would do on the actual page where you go and then stick the form, but this is more for deciding or sorting out the fields and what order they're going to be in. But we will come back to address that later on. Let's go back over to Jet Appointments and back over to Settings because there's still a few things we need to do. Even though we've done the setup, it's a good idea just to run through and make sure everything checks out. So the general settings, we have sessions. We are not going to be selecting a provider post type. We also have WooCommerce integration enabled. Are we going to manage the capacity for our services? And I would say that maybe if you are running a class and you're at a venue, maybe you can't have more than say 20 people, 10 people, 100 people. So that one could be quite important. So let's go and leave that in. Also, we might as well show what the capacity counter is because maybe I'm going to book a session and it's me and five of my mates and I go, yeah, let's go there. But there's only four places left. Now we're going to have to pick straws and decide who doesn't get to go or maybe not. Let's go over to working hours. This now is kind of pulling back through what we've already done in the setup. If you don't do the setup and you start working through this, and then you go to the setup, you're going to find that you're duplicating effort because it will start to ask you to put all of that back in again. So I strongly recommend you do the setup first. Do I want to customize my labels? Like, or am I quite happy with Sun Mun Chu? Do we want to scroll to appointment details after they select the slot? Again, I would say that's not a bad idea. Don't look at that and go, well, that looks quite complex. What do you mean by that? It just means that when you go and pick your date and your time, it will then jump down to where you now add in your details. And I say it adds in a little bit of animation with the way it just moves, which I think is quite neat and nice. And it almost saved the user having to just scroll. And it's a tiny bit of scroll. I'm going to leave this as it is. I mean, you could, if you want, decide that maybe if someone has booked an appointment, but the payment hasn't been completed, do you want those slots to still be available? Or you might say that, well, someone is about to pay. So if I've got capacity of 20 and say 10 people have said they want a slot, but the payment hasn't come through yet, do I now want another load of people to go and book it? And that's probably not good practice because then you will get a double booking. So you may want to keep or exclude. We'll just put it on to exclude for now. I'm going to leave the others as they are, but you can see what the descriptions are for them. Let's go over to integrations. Now, if you were, say, running like a yoga class or a cardio class or a webinar on how to design a website, you know, it can be anything you want. You may want to integrate it with Zoom. Now, when you do that, you are going to have to go in and put in your keys and go through the motions of setting that up. But that facility is there as well. And I know people who have used other plugins to bring this in or then they start worrying with iframe and then things don't sync or connect correctly. So Jet Appointment has got you covered for that if you decide to go down that road. Now in Workflow, you can actually trigger an event to occur. So let me just say I was going to activate this and I'm now going to add in a new Workflow item. I'm going to say that when the appointment is created, so let's say now they've gone and made their appointment, I want straight away for an email to go to them. So over here, I'm now going to call this appointment email. Send email is the action. You do have other items here like call a webhook. So if you want to get dirty with the data, you can go and do that. The email is going to go to appointment user email. I'm going to say service title with a space. I'm going to add in the appointment start end date and I'll then add in my email as well. And of course, we can add in an email message as well. So I put a bit of text in. I'm going to add in a service meta field and another one, which will be the location. Remember, go and get your name IDs if you're a little bit unsure. And you can add in some further text and information as you want there. Let's go over to tools. And this now is just going to return back the fields that we'd already gone and set up. So if you do forget to do it on the setup, you can do it here. But get into the good practice of doing that from the get go. We do now need to go back over to our actual sessions down here. So let's click that and we need to go through each one of these and we need to now assign the extra information. So let me explain what I mean. I'm going to go and pick for the sake of what we're doing here at the moment, extreme weights. Let's go in and edit that. The original meta fields that we built with Jet Engine are all still populated. But when I now scroll down, we have extra fields appear. 
appointment settings, capacity, uh, what kind of appointment is it, uh, the price per slot, and we also have a custom schedule if we want to enable it. This again is really simple. I'm going to say the capacity for this class is 20 and it is a slot. And the price per slot, if I scroll back up, you'll see is £45. So I'm going to change that to now be 45 So yes, you are regurgitating something you had above, but it's not going to take you too long to scroll up and down to get that information. Now, this was set to be every day at 8 a.m. And it is only for a one hour slot. And because it states over here, a one hour session. You could argue that I could have had a meta field here for duration. And I think in hindsight, I should have done that. So you would have had duration as a text field and you could have had like a, a glossary or a select box for say half an hour, one hour, two hours, something like that. So we're going to go down here and we are now going to do custom schedule one hour. Have some buffer time before and after. Now, when can a user actually book an appointment? Is it any date in the future? Or maybe it's limited. So they can book up uh, for the next, say, 14 days. They can't book prior to that. Well, you might want to limit it to seven, but I'm only going to go with 14 days for now. So I'm going to say Mon to Wednesday from 8 a.m. Okay, so let's just change that there. So we've got eight till five, eight to five, eight to five, eight to five. I'm going to get rid of Thursday completely. I'm going to get rid of Friday completely and Saturday and Sunday. So Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, there is no availability going on. Are we going to have any days off? Sure, let's go and add those in. So let's go for Christmas. I did do it on the setup, but because this is now going to be for an individual session, you have to refine it for the individual session. And I, I understand what you're saying. It might feel like duplicated effort. That is all done. And then I'm going to just scroll all the way back up and I'm going to hit update. Imagine I've now gone and done this for all of them. And yes, I know what you're saying. That's going to take quite a bit of time. But to be honest, if you had 100 sessions on here, you'd have to go in anyway and modify who the trainer is, what the when the, the appointments occur, what is the description on there. So you're going to have to put in all of that, your images as well. What we now need to do is go and create the form. Well, we already have the form, but we need to modify it. And then we need to add it to our single post template. So let's go and adjust our form. Go to Jet Engine and go to Forms, and you should see single and static. We're going to work on the single one. We're going to go and click Edit. And here are now the fields that are brought back to us. The service ID, which is hidden. The user email, which is a text the appointment date, which is the appointment date, and we have a submit button. I do just want to show you though, that if you had gone into say the static or the sample page, you then have another field over here called service ID. So why is that here and not on the single one? Well, again, like I've already explained, the single one will already know where you've gone because you're on a single post template. Therefore, you don't need to select the ID again. However, if you were going to allow them to now pick another trainer or pick something else, you could go and drop in extra fields. So let's just go back over to our single service booking form. So at the moment, I've got those fields there. Let's just say I was now going to let them pick another field. So I've gone and hit add field. I'm going to go and hit the pencil. So I've got a glossary field for the level, which is beginner, intermediate or advanced. Now, my classes already kind of tell you what they are in terms of the level. But what if you had you were allowed to pick so that maybe there's a session and depending on what level you pick, that is how they will tailor it for you. So I'm going to go to my type and I'm going to pick, say, the select. And then I'm going to go and obviously give it a name label description if you want but down here where it says fill the options from i'm now going to go and pick meta field and down here i would pop in level in fact it wasn't called level i think it was called session type so that field would now be visible for you once you've hit apply changes so when we eventually add the form you could go and select beginner intermediate or advanced I don't actually want to have that in, so I'm going to get rid of that and hit the X over there to just remove it because I'm going to keep this simple. But I just wanted to show you that if you were using the single service or even the static and you wanted to add in extra fields, you could do that. Remember, we did add in three extra fields. There was cost, phone and notes. So let's go and add them into our form. We're going to hit add field. We hit the pencil. I'm going to select number. 
I'm going to give this the name phone and I'm going to give it the label phone. You'll notice I've put the name in lowercase because the name is the one that will actually sit in the database. The label is the one we actually see. So that's the one I'm going to pop in capitals. And I'm going to say that it is a required field and then I'm going to hit apply changes. And then I'm going to add in another field. And this one, we are going to set it to be a text area. You could do WYSIWYG if you want, but we'll leave it as a text area. I'm going to call it notes put the label as notes. Uh, it doesn't have to be required because they might not all want to complete that in. And I'm going to say add further comments. Let's hit add apply changes. And then the last thing I'm going to add is the cost field. So I'm going to make this be a calculate field because what you have to remember here is that the cost is already predefined. If you go and add in a number field, they might go and type, well, I'm going to pay $1 for this weight training, which you definitely don't want. Let's go and change the label over here to be a uh, cost in lowercase and then capital cost over there. But what we now need to do is tell it what to return. Now, what you don't want to do is go and type in 45 because then that's going to apply 45 for every session, which makes total no sense. What you need to do is actually scan down here and it does give you some examples. Now, you may look at this and go, well, I'm going to use a percentage field colon colon cost percentage sign because the field is cost. But what you actually want to be using is this field over here. So when I pop this in here, this macro returns the appointment price. So you can decide on what is your value prefix. So I'm going to go and pop in dollar sign there. Obviously, with your WooCommerce, you'd have set your currency up and all of that. So make sure they are consistent. Let's just go and hit apply changes. Now, if we scroll back to the top, we've got service ID, which is hidden because it it basically picks up what the session type is or the class. You got the email, you got the appointment date, you got the book now button, uh, submit button, sorry. Let's pop that to the bottom. What we are missing though is the name field. Let's hit add field. So I've gone back over to appointments. I've gone over to tools and I'm going to add in a new field and I'm going to call this one name. I'm just going to save and update the appointments table. Go back over to my form and I'm now just going to ensure that we've got text, text, and I'm going to change this to be name, and pop the name down there. And I'm going to say that this is a required field and apply changes. And I'm now going to pick this field up and I'm going to pop it over there. So there are all the fields that I want to be returned back over to me. Now that we did have a user underscore name field that you could have used as well, but I just wanted to show you that if you forgot what it was, you could just go and add in a brand new name field. Now what happens after you hit submit? It's going to basically insert the appointment into over here where we have appointments, where at the moment we'll have nothing. Let me just go and hit the pencil on that. So look, this is what it does. Insert appointment, service ID, it's going to have the user email field. We might as well get the name as well. So look, let me now pick it because it's now been added to our list above. Are we going to have in any notes? Well, yeah, let's add that in. What about the phone? Let's do that. We might as well put the cost in because they're there anyway. Now, it does have the name field twice, and that's because uh, we already had user underscore name. So go back in the video to when I was first doing the setup, there was user underscore name. You could, if you want, use that instead and not add in the name field. But I just wanted to show you that if it wasn't there and you wanted to add it on the fly, you could have done so. We don't have a separate provider post type. I've mentioned this previously. We're only doing it on sessions. But if the trainer was a separate post type, we would have obviously have pulled that in and you would have had the fields there. I'm going to set the WooCommerce price field to be cost as well. And then I'm just going to adjust some of the WooCommerce mapping field. So I'm going to say the first name is there. The email address is the user email. And that will be it. That's all I'm going to pop in there. Now, the next thing you want to do is now decide on further action. So we've done the insert appointment or we've adjusted it. I'm going to hit add notification and we're going to get send email. And I'm going to add in another one, which again is send email. And I'm going to click the pencil and I'm going to change this to be redirect to a page. I do want to just show you, though, that you do have other options on here. So if you are connected to a MailChimp or active campaign, we'll basically add that appointment to a mailing list, which isn't a bad idea. But for the simplicity, we're going to go with changing this to be redirect to a page. And if we had another page, a thank you page, or another page where we now wanted to show them, say, some shopping items, maybe, or 
something about future events or even take them elsewhere, they could click that and they would go there. I've got rid of that because I'm not overly bothered by it, but I just wanted to show you the steps. The key one though is send an email. And I know we did that in the setup and settings, but what you now need to do is define it for the single post template. So send email, the email will go to yourself and it will probably say new appointment made. And then you go and decide on your content, dear, thank you, whatever you want to put. And you have a list of fields here and you would basically write out your email. You might say, um, so let's just take the name field here and I might say, dear, hi, whatever, right? So you can make it work for you in terms of what is your layout. By the way, I must stress though, that just having the word booking there is a little bit misleading. So I'm gonna change it to be appointment. But in fact, I'm gonna change the whole thing to be appointment form because later on in later videos, when we add jet booking, it's gonna say the word booking again, and I don't wanna confuse things. Let's just hit update for a moment. Let's now add the form to our single post template. Go to WordPress, go to templates, click save templates, click all so you can see everything you've got. There is our sessions single post template, then hit edit with Elementor. There's many places I could go and drop the form. I could drop it up in the hero banner. I could drop it above the description. I could drop it on the right hand side. I could, I could create a sidebar. There's many places you can do it. For simplicity though, I'm actually just going to go and drop it below the location form. In fact, no, we'll drop it above the location form. So over in our widget list, I'm going to type form and it is this one over here. If you drop that form, that's your standard elemental form. In fact, even if you try and type in appointment, you won't actually get an appointment form. What you wanna be pulling over is form like that. So we're gonna pick this up and I'm now gonna drop it over there. And I'm just gonna double check where it goes and I'm gonna lift it up and I'm now gonna pop it there. Now, I'm just gonna give it some advanced uh, margin separation from the item above and I'm gonna go with about 40, no, we won't we'll go with more than that. I'll go with 50 there and from the bottom, I'm gonna say, give me 50 as well, just so we have a bit of spacing. Now our form at the moment doesn't know what to do. It, it's gonna say, please select form to show. So we will now go here and I'm gonna type sing to get single. I've kept it quite static, single service appointment form. It's not a bad idea to name them accordingly, especially if you're gonna have 20 different forms. I would never recommend doing that to many because it will get complicated. And when you do that, you will now see all of our fields come through. We got the date, name, user email. I mean, we have got the word user email. I am going to go back and modify that because I now realize I don't like that word whatsoever. So we will modify it later on. We've got phone, we've got cost, we've got notes, we've got book now, form submitted successfully. There was an error. These messages will only appear as they complete it. So let's go and modify this form for starters. Is this going to be a column layout or is it going to be a row? And if you go for a row layout, you can see the changes. It very much depends on your layout. This is currently restricted into a particular container that we have, a child container. So it's not taking up all the space that we have over here at the moment. The column works okay, but it does make the form quite long. If you go to row, it simplifies it a little bit more. And I have to say that does look a little bit nicer. Do you want them to stay on the same page whereby when they click it, it just Ajax submits it. That's not a bad idea. If however, you want the entire page to reload, you could also go for that. I think the Ajax submit does kind of work so much better. If I go to the advanced tab and I set it to be a custom width, I can adjust the width of this. So that is the full width, uh, give or take the extra padding right I put in there of that form. Well, the child container. So if you want to have it wide, you can make it wide or you might actually find that actually that kind of works pretty well as well. Um, if you wanted to, you could put more items in down this side as well. So, you know, with a bit of row and a bit of wrap, you can modify how this looks. Don't forget you do have row gap, which I will leave to be a five. And let's go and set up our typography. So for the labels, I've made them be a one REM and I'm gonna make them be just a little bit weightier. I'm gonna shrink down the gap between the labels. It was set to 30 at the moment. I'm gonna bring them in to only be 20. I could align them to be on the right-hand side or the left. I think it makes perfect sense for them just to be centered and on the left there. 
I've also increased the row gap to be 10. Um, the border type does look quite thick. So we're going to ensure that it is just a one and a softer gray like that. And then you have further settings for checkbox, calculated fields, all of these down here if you start to bring them over. The key one for me though is just a submit field. I'm going to set the background color to be this orange color. Ooh, not that one. Looks way too dark because we have a, a white background here at the moment. We're going to go for a white there and we'll make the typography be, we'll make it be a 600. And I'm going to move the button to be on the right hand side so it feels like you complete it and then you hit the book now. I will add in a hover color though and I'm going to say the background for that when you hover over it will go with the dark there. So when you hover over it, you have a bit of color change. What we haven't done though yet is touch the appointment calendar. And again, this is one that you may want to have a think about. So at the moment, if I go and start to increase it, you can actually push it out more. So you may feel like that's too narrow. Um, I think that size is actually okay. If you want to have a wider size, you could do. You could also mess around with the margins and the padding, the heading, the typography. Um, what will happen though is that when you click this, the slots will appear. And if, you, well, let me show you what happens. Okay, so if I go and hit update for a moment and I now click one of these dates, can you see what we get? We get this opening up like that. And I have to say, it really does not look good at all. So let's just make sure we are currently clicked onto the uh, appointment calendar. I'm going to zero out the margin and padding and I'm going to say from the bottom, give me about 30 just to push down and have a bit of breathing space from the field entries. I'm going to zero out the, the padding for my slots and then I'm going to modify them now to be 10 uh, all the way around like that, just so it, it looks a little bit better. I will give it a border type as well of a solid. I really don't like that. Let's go for a one. Let's drop the color down. And then I'm going to go and give it some padding inside. So I'm just going to zero out for now and I'm just going to say, let's go with about a five. Let's just see how that looks. You do have to keep clicking on it. But what you now get is like um, if there was like a capacity, that's why we've got the one one there. This is just a template. So it's not bringing back the uh, 20, I think we set for weight training. But you can see 815 and 915 and we can now see our slots. I'm going to zero out the margin and I'm going to say give me 10 like that. So you can start to control how it looks. And you have so many features over here, okay? If I wanted to now go and make this have a different background color, you could do. So please don't feel like, oh, is that how it looks? I don't like it. No, you have a lot of styling there for you. You can stylize the, uh, the month, you can stylize the days, uh, all of the values. That is, in simplicity, the form now built. Let's go and see it in action. So I've gone over to our page and I am intentionally going to go and pick extreme weights because that's the one we've kind of entered in those extra appointment fields for. And when we scroll down, we got the trainer and we've got his slots. Now you got a location below. Now you could, if you want, have put all of this into like a container. I mean, you could have had it overlapping the hero banner down here, push everything else further down or rearrange it. So it's kind of there in your eye line when you get to the page. There's so much flexibility. Now, when we get down, remember I made uh, this trainer or this session you can't book it in the future. You can only book for the next 14 days. Look, the slots are not available. And if you go back here, you got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, there, is a, there is nothing on there for Friday. There's no available slots. There's nothing for Thursday either. But if you were to go to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, any one of these, you can now see the time slots appear. And there are 20. Remember, that's the capacity we set. So let's go in for say the 17th and let's go and secure the 9.45 to 10.45. His calendar starts at eight o'clock. There's a 15 minute buffer time and it runs until 9.15. And then you have 15 minutes buffer time afterwards. So that will take it from 9.15 to 9.30. And then the 9.45 session, because there's a 15 minute buffer time before, that is why you have a 30 minute gap going on here. So you may have to play with it a little bit because you might look at it and go, oh, I don't want that big gap. Fine, go and adjust it then. Maybe reduce it to five minute or 10 minute. But play that in your mind, okay? Every appointment has a buffer before and a buffer after. Let's go for 9.45 to 10.45 and you can see their appointment details, extreme weights, October, da 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 Let's go and pop our details in. Please be gentle with me. And then when you hit book now, 
I hope you saw the message that said form successfully submitted and then it comes over to the checkout page. You would obviously pop in your details. Now I've just set this up as a fake direct bank transfer. You would obviously do it with PayPal and Stripe and whatnot. You would hit place order. The emails would fire off. Uh, the appointment is then set. And if I go back over to WordPress and I go to appointments and appointments, you can see here that it is now been entered in. It currently says on hold. Why is it on hold? Well, that's because the payment's not currently been done yet. So you might want to go and let them know. And if and when the payment does go through, you can go and click the pencil here and you could then say, right, this is now completed or not. We'll leave it on hold for now or you might set it to processing. Now you can see that some fields have not pulled through. That was just due to the mapping, but you would go and adjust that. And I always do recommend that whenever you create an appointments site, go through and test it out to make sure everything works perfectly. And if they had gone through the checkout process, then you would have your order appear here in WooCommerce as well. Now that was Jet Appointments with a single post template. If you didn't want to do it on a single post template where it feeds through who this is for, you could have done it as a static one. So it's basically the same thing, but now what you'll have is the service ID uh, drop down or select box appears. It's in there when the form creates itself. You could then go and stick that on your blog page or any other page, but it would work in basically the same way. As I've just stated moments ago, please take the time to pop in your fields and test out. And when you notice that there's a gap, go back and refine either the form or what you're doing on the field or go and check your WooCommerce settings as well. But Jet Appointment, you do have to think a little bit, okay? You've got to set things up and then methodically go through step by step and you'll get there.